Okay, welcome everyone to the first session of the data conference. Um, we'll go ahead and start with just introduction so you know who we are. So I'm Kristen Kennedy. Um, I'm the Senior Director of Data-Driven Analytics at EdPlus. Before working there, I've been there almost a year now. Um, I was in what was UTO at the time. Um, and this was my idea six years ago for the data conference. So you have me to blame if you don't enjoy it, but if you like it, <laughs> that's good. Um, so I've been working with data for a really long time. Before that, I was at Rio Salado College as well. And then with me, I have Elizabeth Harrington. Hi, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Harrington, or Liz, and I'm the Assistant Director of EdPlus Data Analysis. I've been there about six years, and I'm excited to talk about EdPlus Data and ASU Online. She's the one that knows everything. <laughs> so thank you for coming. So our title, as you saw, is A Set of Legos Without Instructions, and we'll explain what that means. So we're going to go over who is EdPlus, what do we do, how do we do it, and then some key data points. So welcome. Um, this is Ed Plus. Uh, this is our charter. We are a central enterprise unit for ASU focused on the design and scalable delivery of digital teaching and learning models to increase student success. Um, this slide probably needs to be updated. We do have over 300 fully online programs now. So we offer programs throughout the university. I show this on our strategy, on our uh, culture. Biggest one here is that we feel a sense of urgency. We've discussed on our team, what's the difference between urgency and emergency? They sound similar. Um, sometimes we think it's an emergency, it's just urgency. So we move very fast. So if uh, anyone from Ed Plus is very fast with you, we're just, we feel a sense of urgency over where we work. People want things quickly. Um, and we strive for excellence and we like to be bold and achieve our milestones. And that is part of why we feel a sense of urgency. We have to achieve our milestones. So, um, I just showed this from the facts.asu.edu to show you how much we've grown in a short amount of time. Um, and you know, we we don't get to rest on our laurels. We're supposed to continue growing and growing and growing. So, to continue to educate people. But you can see the green bar has increased significantly. So um, online continues to grow. And you can notice here that in fall of 2008, we only had 994 students. So whereas now, 57,000. So it's grown a lot quickly. Within Ed Plus, we have three main areas of data that people work there. We have our team data analysis. Then we have Action Lab, which does more research. And then another group, Applied Data Science and Technology which are presenting here today as well. Um, so I put these up. In part, you'll notice there's a, a food theme for our group. So these are like bakeries and things. But um, you know, often you buy a set of Legos and they give you very specific instructions and then you can build it and it looks amazing um, if you followed the instructions correctly. But we really feel like with us, we're just sort of handed a bunch of Legos and say, make some things, make them cool and make them work. So we have to be creative. So this is our team. Um, we have, uh, you see Liz up there and we have um, also Michael Woodmeyer, our data ETL manager. So we have uh, an ETL team, we have a reporting team and we have researchers as well who do some basic research. Um, we also have others that, while not part of our team, Brandon Cawthorn, Chuck Hatchell, and Macho Cardenia, who's also presenting today, do a lot of data as well. Um, data is all around us. So we have a lot of people working on data in Ed Plus. This is our mission statement, just to let you know. And if you look at the, the first letter of each word, it spells the word snack. If you, as I mentioned, we have a food theme the little Lego snack bar. Um, so we like to provide solutions and not data, derive new insights, answer analytical questions. We like to be curious and creative and transfer knowledge. Um, since I've come on board, this is the vision that I've tried to set for our team. 
If you notice it says virtual, that's because um, a really big thing we have in Ed Plus right now is Dreamscape Learn, if you've heard about it, and trying to get students with virtual classes. And so I sort of tied that in. We want to make data appear easy, even though it's not <laughs> for us that are pulling the data. But we want the people who pull the data or who use the data to make decisions for it to be easy to get to. So that is our vision. These are our values of our team. Um, if anybody wants to come work for us. <laughs> uh, we just really value impact and work-life balance and communication and, and all of those things. And then the key building blocks to our success, we hope, is uh, data access, data literacy, and insights. So under data access, we are working on a project for data virtualization so that data, we can build sort of our own we have a data mart now, we'd like to make that easier. We wanna build easy data sets using Excel. Access innovation, things like instead of always having a dashboard, what about if we can push data out to Slack in different ways that people can get data when they need it? Um, and then our dashboards, which are amazing. Data literacy, we feel like in order for people to make decisions, they need to know what to do with the data when they get it. So that's a big thing that we have a presentation tomorrow and I think we have one today also. We call it data treat because of course we do because it's food. Um, so we're doing a lot around data culture, data education, knowledge sharing, and some and some conferences like today. And then insights. We have lots of different research that goes on, but how do we know what it is? So we're working on ways to get that. We have key metrics and then intervention strategies and predictive analytics. Just to give you an idea, we do have our own data mart, which is over 1.2 terabytes um, of data, which is great, but that's a lot of data. So we are looking, we don't want, we wanna grow our students, not our data mart, but um, we continue to work on that. We have our portal. We have over 20 portal groups in the analytics portal of different kinds of data for people to have different permissions. And we've had, in 2021, we had over 287 people, not only from Ed Plus, but all around the university using our dashboards and our data, but that's a number we'd like to see increase. And then we've had 15,000 portal views. We also have been trying to get better organized in the way that we work. So we have started a group we're calling Data Innovations. We're calling them pods also. Um, they're sort of products. We have these, each circle is a different area. We have data literacy, research reporting, partner data services, data sets, and data operations. You'll see more, especially when Liz talks about our partner data services. Um, we feel that these all work together. And so um, when we talk about how we provide solutions instead of just reports, if we imagine that we wanted a graduation solution, we wouldn't just want a dashboard, but instead we might need a data mark table a data set someone could use in Excel, a data dictionary of what fields those are, the web access to that data set, the dashboard to tell you about the graduations, maybe some Slack messages, um, training or marketing on how to use it, and then the research that's been done in any partner data that might be involved. For example, our Starbucks program is a big program and we like to talk about specific graduation there. So this just shows that while there may be just one thing we're trying to solve a graduation. We feel it goes through all the different areas. And so as we work on our projects or our products, we try to look at that from that lens and try to take a holistic approach as opposed to just someone asks us for us or asks us for a report and we give it back to them. Some sources of data, we have the usuals that, that many of you might have or use, PeopleSoft Workday. Canvas Salesforce is a very big entity. We do have our own Salesforce in Ed Plus um, that is heavily used by our enrollment center and our success center. Um, we also have, we use different sources of data. We use Airtable, Google Analytics is very big and, and various other sources. Our data mart has data from, we have data that we collect for year over year snapshots session specific, and Liz will talk a little more about that, our corporate partnerships, our student success coaches and our finance team, enterprise Salesforce, as well as EdPlus Salesforce. And then we also have a lot of data with our 
student onboarding to tie into Google Analytics as well. And as you can imagine, that's a lot of data, just the Google Analytics alone. So trying to tie that together is large. Just to give you a sense of how it all works, and I'm sure it works like this in most areas, but we get the source data that goes into then the enterprise data warehouse. Then we take that data and put it into our data mart, and then it's used in our reporting through the analytics portal. We also use Google Data Studio a lot in Ed Plus as well. We also do have um, data in the enterprise data lake as well as some of our own. We have been using Airtable. We've been playing around. One of the things we've been talking about is how best to share our CSV data sets with people so that they can explore the data on their own. This is a way we were able to embed this quickly into the analytics portal. So um, that's just one example. We have a, I think it's going on right now, but if you want to watch the recording later, we do have a session on Airtable and ways we've used that. Um, other things we've done, we, the Sun Awards, um, we have a Slack channel in Ed Plus, I know many other units do, so that everyone can see who got a Sun Award every day. It goes through into Slack automatically using Alteryx. We also have been working on ways to present data and tables and graphs directly into Slack automatically, again, through Alteryx. We also, in Slack, we publish every week our terms of the week, and we're trying to keep people to understand those terms and what they mean. This is our Ed Plus data treat, as I mentioned, um, which is our data literacy, which is around data culture, training, education, knowledge, and sharing. And I think that presentation is this afternoon if you're interested in that. And then just things that we're working on right now, our data mart is in the analytics user database, but we are looking at working with the provost office in a Redshift managed services and with enterprise technology. We also use BigQuery a lot, Google BigQuery, especially our applied data science group. So we wanna work with them closely. Telium, which there's a presentation on this afternoon. If you want to come to that, we're looking into that more and more. Google Data Studio and Denota, which is that data virtualization product that we're looking at. So that's all the stuff we do in the way that we do it. But what we wanted to share with you too are certain things about ASU Online specifically and the way that we categorize data. So now you get to hear from the person who really knows. If you guys want to hear more about any particular topic, feel free to stop me. So first, I want to talk about the data that we work with and that our users are interested in seeing. So I have this group. It started with about eight uh, shapes here. And then I kept thinking, oh, we have more, we have more. So I added, uh, we're up to 12. So these are the areas of data that we typically work with, uh, within our team and at Ed plus. Yeah, that's a great question. So ASU online is the biggest product that we support at Ed plus, but there are many different initiatives that we also support at Ed plus. So ASU Online is kind of the mothership, and then we have the satellite projects that we also support. So uh, in this, let's go back. In this diagram, you'll see there are a few shapes, things like Me3, Air University. Uh, those are separate initiatives. They don't involve ASU Online, but they do... It is a project that we work with at Ed Plus. So it's uh, I'm trying to think of a succinct way to say it. It's there's a bit of that, yeah, and it's it's a bit of um, it's mostly we are just incredibly successful. Oh, no, I'm just <laughs> uh, it's a bit of that, and we also share some of the the broader digital landscape with learning enterprise as well. So um, they support things like universal learner courses. So it's not just Ed Plus that supports these digital initiatives. Do you want to add anything, Jennifer? Okay. Okay. Well, and so, yeah. sometimes we start something and, and then hand it off to, so like universal learning courses, we sort of started those, but then they went to learning enterprise and things like that. So sometimes we might try things first in Ed Plus and then they can move on. But ASU Online, Ed Plus is the department and ASU Online is our biggest. Correct. Yeah. So ASU Online is the campus. Yeah. Good questions. 
Kristen, I think you said it very succinctly, so I appreciate that. Sure. Okay, so one of the major areas of emphasis of the, the data work that we do at EdPlus is looking at pipeline reporting for specifically ASU online prospective students. This is a huge area of focus within EdPlus and leadership. So I've highlighted the different areas that are included in the pipeline reporting, which expands beyond just the uh, pipeline tile. So we look at things like marketing attribution from Google Analytics data, uh, the ASU student information system, that's the PeopleSoft type data, national student clearinghouse. So that would be, we evaluate uh, where someone may fall out of our prospective student funnel. Uh, we can take a look at clearinghouse data to see eventually if they enrolled in another uh, university. We also look at third-party data. So the very, very top of our funnel, uh, one of our uh, big populations of, of interest are Starbucks new hires. So Starbucks shares their new hire list with us, and we take a look at that to see who uh, turns into a prospective student from that piece. So there are a lot of different components that go into pipeline reporting, and we'll go into the, the funnel a little bit more. So this is an illustration of the ASU Online Learner uh, funnel or pipeline in this case. So it starts with an inquiry. An inquiry can be a number of things. It could be someone starts an ASU Online application. It can be that someone is a Starbucks new hire. It can be someone goes to the ASU Online website and requests more information. So all of those things are the top of the funnel for this purpose. The next stage we might look at is whether or not they started an application, which can also be synonymous with the start of the funnel if that's the very first thing someone does. And then we just follow them through the journey. So did they submit their application? Were they admitted? And did they enroll? And of course, uh, there are many offshoots of this pipeline that uh, leadership is always interested in looking at. Things like if someone wasn't admitted, were they deferred to an admission pathway, something like Global Freshman Academy? Did they pursue that pathway and then eventually get admitted? Uh, did they register for a class but never actually stayed enrolled to 21st day? So there's a lot of different areas to really dive in to the pipeline or funnel. So we spend a lot of time doing that. Correct, yep. So this, uh, this is from one particular point in time. So it's year to date uh, for this year, but that's where we're at. Yeah. yeah, that's a good good question. So we'll talk a little bit about the transition away from the Pearson contract. So previously, Pearson was our enrollment partner. They were responsible for marketing and enrollment coaching for a large portion of our prospective student population. As of October 22nd, 2022, uh, that was uh, the partnership with Pearson came to a formal close. So EdPlus is responsible for marketing and enrollment coaching of all domestic prospective students, well, all prospective students. But we also do rely on different units to help with that as well. So we like to just, if we see a problem, we like to get as many people involved as possible to help the student ultimately. For example, I don't know if we want to mention it, but we will. <laughs> Uh, there's an initiative to improve the ASU online application process. Uh, we had heard from students that they were having some issues working through the admissions application. So uh, there are some efforts to try and improve the experience for users or prospective students in this case. Okay, next up is the corporate partner team. So I'm going to talk a little bit about teams that we support and data that we use to support those teams. So our corporate partner team, we have both an internal to EdPlus corporate partner team who works with the external corporate partners. So uh, for example, we have folks we work with within EdPlus that are on a Starbucks team who are kind of our liaison to the Starbucks, uh, the company itself. So we provide reporting and data mostly driven by our data sharing agreement and operational needs. So it kind of varies based off of the, the partner that we're working with. And you'll see in pretty much all, or I think all of the slides, the ASU student information system data is, is certainly central to the data that we're providing. The RFI and pipeline data, our third parties are very interested in the health of their pipeline and, and 
uh, how many students are engaging in these programs. Some third parties or corporate partners have uh, course requirements or major requirements for their students who are taking advantage of these corporate partnership programs. So they uh, offer different tuition benefits to different uh, are based on different levels. So each corporate partner agreement is unique in that way. So that's a little bit about the corporate partner team. And we have a little more information on that coming up, but we do also have a specific corporate partner presentation happening. I believe it's simultaneously to this one. So you'd have to watch the recording, a little plug for that. But if you wanna know more about corporate partners, you can definitely check out that recording. Next up is the Enrollment Coaching Center. So the Enrollment Coaching Center, I should have grabbed a number of how many enrollment coaches we have, but it's growing exponentially, particularly with the dissolution of the Pearson contract. So the enrollment coaches work with prospective students to help facilitate the admission to enrollment process. And Salesforce is the case management system that is used to manage the coaches' interactions with students. So I did not highlight that square here, but or that shape here, but uh, case management is is incorporating all of this data into Salesforce is is the data lift here. So piecing together all of the prospective learner information so that coach has information, the information they need. Go ahead. Yes, so the Enrollment Coaching Center is specific to ASU Online prospective students. Good question. Okay, so I thought this might be a good time to talk about the Pearson transition. We already kind of covered it. So uh, just to reiterate, it was a long-term partnership that concluded on October 22nd, and Ad Plus is now responsible for all enrollment coaching. And previously, Pearson was responsible for all uh, enrollment coaching unless, uh, except for a few specific populations. So corporate populations have always been managed or have have been managed more recently uh, in-house and, uh, but Pearson was responsible for most domestic markets. And Ed Plus in partnership with the Marketing Hub are responsible for all um, marketing and advertisement efforts, which is a shift. And a lot of pressure. <laughs> so, yeah, advertising is very expensive or the the scale of advertising is uh, they're spending a lot of money. So they want to make sure that uh, we are getting better return on that investment than Pearson was or not necessarily as a contest, but they want to make sure their dollars are being well spent. So uh, there's a lot of reporting that's necessary just to evaluate the success of campaigns and determine what does a successful campaign look like and how do we attribute uh, marketing to eventual enrollment, if that's the goal. Yep, yep, exactly. So the Enrollment Coaching Center, uh, is it hundreds? Yeah, and it continues to grow as fast as we can, um, as fast as we can hire people. And that the pressure is because um, if we're not growing like we we should or people want us to, we could say, well, Pearson didn't do their job, but now it's all on us. So that's really the pressure, but, um, and that's okay. We're up for it. Okay. So next up is the Success Coaching Center. And I will say uh, uh, my first probably year or two took me a long time to understand the difference between the Success Coaching Center and the Enrollment Coaching Center, oftentimes within Ed Plus. Uh, it would just be referred to as the coaching center. And I didn't want to ask what I thought might be a dumb question of which coaching center. Uh, now I know we have an enrollment coaching center. We have a success coaching center. So the success coaching center, those are the success coaches work with enrolled ASU online students and serve as the students single point of contact for ASU online. So they work as a a support person for the student and also a resource hub for the student. So they can point them to existing resources, help them to get uh, in touch with an advisor, help them to get in touch with someone in uh, financial aid or, or student billing services. So uh, the Success Center, again, is hugely influential to the ASU online student experience. 
part of their data needs, similar to the Enrollment Coaching Center, they need student information system data, they need course data, they need survey data. So we work with the Success Coaching Center data team to help set up uh, some Salesforce case triggers. So that would mean it triggers a case in a Success Coaches Salesforce to reach out to a student at certain intervals. Say a student has dropped or withdrawn from all of their classes for a session, the coach would reach out and say, hey, what's going on? Do you need to get in touch with uh, student billing services to understand how this withdrawal may impact your finances and uh, may or may not prevent you from enrolling in classes moving forward? Things like that. And they use Alteryx also to do some of that to automatically generate those cases. Yes, and they are also presenting. That is a good question. I am not certain on the specifics there. I do know that they're intended to be two very separate services and that the success center or the success coaches do not advise on uh, specific courses for students or serve the role as an advisor. I I believe that the, the, the success coaching center uses the enterprise Salesforce as do the advisors is my understanding. So that so that every interaction between the two is both in the same environment. And just to clarify for the recording, the case triggers we're talking about are not shared with advisors on campus. They're specific to the Ed Plus Success Coaches. But we're always interested in working with units yeah, too. Not if, as like if an people need thing. data, yeah. And again, for the recording, Lisa McIntyre with the Provost Office is working on an effort to integrate the advising uh, triggers or perhaps lack thereof, I'm, I'm not sure, and the success coach triggers. So there is an effort to make uh, those better and meshed. Thank you. Can you describe some of the triggers? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we have things like a new student welcome. So when a student is newly admitted to ASU, uh, they uh, success coach will have a, a case trigger to reach out to them. Things like a student is not yet enrolled for an upcoming session when you're uh, a few weeks out from the start of the session, their success coach will reach out to them to say, hey, there's still time to enroll in the upcoming session if you're interested, or what about the following session? Um, and they have a session tomorrow at 1010 if you'd like. They'll probably talk more in depth about that. Yeah, exactly. I'll let the experts speak to it. <laughs> but we have... Uh, Let's see, probably about 20 case triggers, uh, which can can be a lot for how many cases are being created for these success coaches. So um, yeah, they'll present on that tomorrow. It'll be a good session. Okay, so this ties into our Ed Plus communications team. So the Ed Plus communications team is responsible for email and text communications for current and prospective ASU online students. So some of those triggers we talked about have actually transitioned into automated communications to students to try and lighten the load of success coaches. So things like a new student welcome, perhaps that's better served by an informative email than a case for a success coach. And uh, as mentioned here, comms are in coordination with the coaching center. So they're really cognizant of not having a coach reach out and sending an email communication that is identical information, or at least being cognizant that a student is being touched by uh, multiple communication methods. And one example of some work that our communications team has been involved in and some data that they've used, we have a an initiative uh, that is actually, uh, there are many different teams throughout the university involved with it. It's uh, called Operation Math. So students uh, have not been performing well in, in a few math courses, or they're very challenging for students. So they're looking at these courses to determine how can we help students be more successful in these courses. And one of the callouts that they noticed is that students are enrolled in a more difficult math course than is required for their major. So one example of a communication would be emailing those students who are enrolled in a major that requires a less rigorous math course to say, hey, did you know uh, for your upcoming term, instead of this math course that you're currently enrolled in, you could actually take uh, a different math course that would fulfill your degree requirements. So that's an example 
of a communication that's handled through our communications team that is empowered with data. Okay, so the course quality assurance team. So this is our team of instructional designers. Ed Plus has dozens of instructional designers. I really, I should have come up with uh, or included the team sizes here. So we have a team of instructional designers who work with faculty to improve course design and facilitation. So this can be at the initiation of a course when it's first offered online, or it can be a redesign effort uh, after multiple uh, offerings of a course. So our course quality assurance team, they use all sorts of data, including course data, as you might assume, some survey data and student information system data. It also integrates with our success coaching uh, system. So if a student communicates with their coach that they're having a bad experience in their class for some reason, a coach may flag that for an instructional designer to look into to say, hey, is there a course design issue here where perhaps uh, an instructional designer may want to work with the faculty to evaluate if, if there are some best practices that might be helpful here. Okay, our vertical marketing and program management team. So this team is responsible for launching new academic uh, programs, and they're actually two separate teams that work very closely together. So there's the vertical marketing program growth team, and then there's the program management team. So the vertical marketing team uh, evaluates opportunities to launch new academic programs and kind of gets the ball rolling uh, and does research and evaluation to determine the, the market need for new academic programs and works to launch those programs. And then the program management team works very closely with the units to help uh, maintain those programs and provide the academic units with data that they, and information that they need to help keep those programs uh, successful. Okay, and because we are limited on time. There are many other initiatives that we support within Ed Plus. Action Lab is our research group uh, within Ed Plus. So we help to provide them with the data that they need in order to provide research around the online student experience and best practices. US News and World Report is an initiative that our team supports uh, to make sure we continue to. Uh, perform well in rankings or provide data that determines if we perform well in, in rankings. And the Ed Plus Finance team, so provide, working with the Ed Plus fi Finance team and their data folks to make sure they have the data that they need to uh, operate. Okay, so now some key data points. Sometimes I know it's tricky to surface ASU Online uh, student data because it is different from campus immersion data in the way that it is reported. And I put here different on purpose, mostly. So we do, at Ed Plus, we do operate a little bit differently. So the way we report our data is also a little different, but in some of the work we are doing to transition our data mart over to Redshift Managed Services, we're also looking at our data mart to say, does it need to be different or is there an enterprise resource we could use that would uh, more adequately serve our reporting needs and also better align with the rest of the university? So some of the reasons that our data is different, I'd say the three big reasons I have up here are because of our enrollment coaching center and success coaching centers. So we need to be able to report uh, by session uh, for more operations type functions. We need to support six starts per year. So an ASU online student is able to start with ASU online at any time throughout the year. And our data also needs to be structured in certain ways for our third party contracts. So we have data sharing agreements and sometimes the way that uh, the data requirements are structured in those agreements just don't align with how uh, data is traditionally structured in other reporting. So what this means for data is that for the most part, we look at session-based reporting, which means uh, we don't look at 
C session courses for fall, spring, summer. We look at fall A, fall B, spring A, spring B, summer A, summer B. We also really do not emphasize cohorts in our reporting because of the six starts per year. It's really challenging to do fall to fall uh, reporting for students because so many of our students don't start in fall uh, because we wanna give them the flexibility to start when it's best for them. And summer census is a little tricky. If you're familiar with the census tables, uh, you might know that summer census occurs uh, at an irregular time compared to the other terms. So typically census is 21st day and in summer it is not quite 21st day. So uh, we kind of manufacture a 21st day in summer sessions to keep things regular across all sessions. And we also don't consider whether or not a student or a course is state funded. Again, this typically goes back to the more operations focused or uh, partnership contract focused nature of our reporting. So whether or not a student or a course is state funded typically doesn't um, need to be considered. Okay, so I just wanted to pull a few facts and figures. So this data is from the most recent academic year. 2022, it's full year's worth of data. And I just wanted to call out, because this was surprising to me, we don't typically pull back this far, but ASU Online is really huge. Uh, there are a lot of uh, ASU Online students. So this is a distinct count of students in the past academic year, over 82,000 students, compared to all other uh, campuses, which are 85,000. If you're curious how that compares to Tempe, Tempe campus is about 60,000 students. Okay, so something you might already know about ASU Online, we have far more transfer students than a typical campus or than campus immersion. So 50, about 52% of our students are transfer students. And again, this is just looking at the past academic year, but uh, it is a uh, consistent trend. Corporate partner students, in case you're wondering, how many ASU online students are associated with a corporate partner? About 30% of our enrolled population in academic year 2022 is associated with a corporate partner. And uh, by far, Starbucks is our largest corporate partner. We had over 18,000 distinct Starbucks students enrolled in the last academic year. The next biggest is Uber, which is approaching 3,000 or so in the past academic year. So far and away, Starbucks is our largest corporate partner. And here's the plug for the corporate partner uh, presentation. Be sure to check out that recording if you want to know more about corporate partners. And now some more student demographics, looking at ASU Online versus the combined other ASU campuses. So on average, our students are older, average age being 29 median slightly lower, and we have uh, a larger percentage of female students and uh, probably expected discrepancy or difference in the percent of students who are Arizona residents. And then down at the very bottom, I wanted to call out the difference in average transfer credits that ASU online students have compared to other campuses. And I will, it can make the uh, admissions process more confusing for students because transfer students have to, or transfer credits have to be accepted. And uh, that takes longer for transfer credits to be accepted and to, it's not something you know immediately whether or not all of your transfer credits will be accepted and apply towards your specific major. So it can extend the admissions process. Sure. It does, yep. Mm -hmm. Correct, yep. For the recording. Yes, this includes graduate and undergraduate students. Totally, and I see your point, yes. Uh, looking at just undergraduate students probably would have been a better way to pull this, but I didn't think about that. So thank you for, for calling it out. Underrepresented minorities. I want to make sure that I define that properly. So I'd probably update it in the slide. 
Any other questions about these figures? That is a good question. We we don't have a specific number or anything that we're trying to achieve, but we are trying to, like everyone else, increase that. One area of focus in particular is to make sure that each stage of our funnel uh, represents the same level of di diversity. So if we have a certain demographic distribution of RFIs or applicants, and then we see down further in the funnel at enrollment or graduation, we have a discrepancy between the distribution of demographics. That's an area of focus of why may certain uh, demographics be falling out of the funnel. Yeah, we do have a lot of our most heavily used dashboards also published on an analytics site. We call it the Ed Plus program site, uh, and that's available to uh, folks who are external to Ed Plus. So it has uh, a lot of our most heavily used information, particularly around ASU enrolled students. But also, as we continue to work on our data mart and switching it over, we do want to make some of the data tables actually available. So we just need to kind of go through that a little and, and make sure that everything's as it should be. But that is something we want to work towards. And in particular, uh, we are, I forgot to mention it, but we are making our corporate partner uh, table available in the data warehouse as well. It should be available in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so that if you want to, you can identify corporate partners the same way that we do within Ed Plus. There also are some tables in the Enterprise Data Warehouse under the student, for example. And if they start with an EP, that stands for Ed Plus. So you know that we worked with them at some point. Students are a part of the colleges. So uh, should it's the, the same degree offered in a digital immersion environment versus a campus immersion environment. Yes, they're not technically Ed Plus students. They're teachers college students. Yeah, that's a good call out. So our program management team is typically responsible for um, maintaining that relationship with the academic units and serve as the data liaison as well. Uh, although uh, they would probably prefer to be just the relationship liaison and, and experts in the, the program offering itself, but they, they do provide data as well and make sure that the units know what is available as far as data and help facilitate data requests as well. And then I know we have some initiatives from leadership who actually, so it's like leadership to leadership, interacting with uh, deans within the colleges to make sure they're aligned on priorities. Um, and they have a whole slide deck they've been going around presenting to each college that's specific to their college with data in it. Yeah. We do, yes. <laughs> um, that's part of the Ed Plus side of things, but we have visitors all the time sharing different things that we do. There is a partnership we're doing, for example, with the University of Tennessee and how we can help them as they try to get into the online world. Um, so yeah, we, we're always trying to help people in different ways and, and partner with other universities that we're a big part of the, um, GSV summit that happens in San Diego every year and ed tech and how we can try different things, different initiatives we've launched like study hall, if you've heard of that or things like that. That's not a university, but, um, but anytime there's a cool technology out there, we want to try it and we want to partner with other universities as well, if we can. That encompasses. So we, um, we have a few surveys that we send out to our students at specific intervals, things like a new freshman student survey or the NESI survey or PSOL survey. Now I'm trying to remember what they stand for. Uh, we also occasionally include surveys and in email communications or a survey type data that's collected by coaches. I think we're supposed to stop now. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right, well, please let us know if you have any questions. You can always email us as well. We're happy to talk to anyone. Thank you so much for coming.